December 30th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Malachi chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. What follows is divine revelation. The word of the Lord came to Israel through Malachi. I have shown love to you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you shown love to us? Esau was Jacob's brother, the Lord explained, yet I chose Jacob and rejected Esau. I turned Esau's mountains into a deserted wasteland and gave his territory to the wild jackals. Edom says, though we are devastated, we will once again build the ruined places. So the Lord, who rules over all, responds, They indeed may build, but I will overthrow. They will be known as the land of evil, the people with whom the Lord is permanently displeased. Your eyes will see it, and then you will say, May the Lord be magnified even beyond the border of Israel. A son naturally honors his father, and a slave respects his master. If I am your father, where is my honor? If I am your master, where is my respect? The Lord who rules over all asks you this, you priests who make light of my name. But you reply, how have we made light of your name? You are offering improper sacrifices on my altar. Yet you ask, how have we offended you? By treating the table of the Lord as if it is of no importance. For when you offer blind animals as a sacrifice, is that not wrong? And when you offer the lame and sick, is that not wrong as well? Indeed, try offering them to your governor. Will he be pleased with you or show you favor? Ask the Lord, who rules over all. But now plead for God's favor that he might be gracious to us. With this kind of offering in your hands, how can he be pleased with you? Ask the Lord, who rules over all. I wish that one of you would close the temple doors so that you no longer would light useless fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord, who rules over all, and I will no longer accept an offering from you. For from the east to the west, my name will be great among nations. Incense and pure offerings will be offered in my name everywhere. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord who rules over all. But you are profaning it by saying that the table of the Lord is common and its offerings despicable. You also say how tiresome it is. You turn up your noses at it, says the Lord who rules over all. And instead bring what is stolen, lame, or sick. You bring these things for an offering. Should I accept this from you? Ask the Lord. There will be harsh condemnation for the hypocrite who has a valuable male animal in his flock, but vows and sacrifices something inferior to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord, who rules over all, and my name is awesome among the nations. Now you priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen and take seriously the need to honor my name, says the Lord who rules over all, I will send judgment on you and turn your blessings into curses. Indeed, I have already done so because you are not taking it to heart. I am about to discipline your children and will spread awful on your faces, the very awful produced at your festivals, and you will be carried away along with it. Then you will know that I sent this commandment to you so that my covenant may continue to be with Levi, says the Lord who rules over all. My covenant with him was designed to bring life and peace. I gave it statutes to him to fill him with awe, and he indeed revered me and stood in awe before me. He taught what was true. Sinful words were not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and integrity, and he turned many people away from sin. For the lips of a priest should preserve knowledge of sacred things, and people should seek instruction from him because he is the messenger of the Lord who rules over all. You, however, have turned from the way. You have caused many to violate the law. You have corrupted the covenant with Levi, says the Lord who rules over all. Therefore I have caused you to be ignored and belittled before all people to the extent to which you are not following after me and are showing partiality in your instruction. Do we not all have one Father? Did not one God create us? 
Why do we betray one another in this way, making light of the covenant of our ancestors? Judah has become disloyal, and unspeakable sins have been committed in Israel and Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the holy things that the Lord loves, and has turned to a foreign god. May the Lord cut off from the community of Jacob every last person who does this, as well as the person who presents improper offerings to the Lord, who rules over all. You also do this. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears as you weep and groan, because he no longer pays any attention to the offering nor accepts it favorably from you. Yet you ask why? The Lord is testifying against you on behalf of the wife you married when you were young, to whom you have become unfaithful even though she is your companion and wife by law. No one who has even a small portion of the Spirit in him does this. What did our ancestor do in seeking a child from God? Be attentive then to your own spirit, for one should not be disloyal to the wife he took in his youth. I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel. And the one who is guilty of violence, says the Lord who rules over all. Pay attention to your conscience and do not be unfaithful. You have wearied the Lord with your words, but you say, How have we wearied him? Because you say everyone who does evil is good in the Lord's opinion, and he delights in them. Or where is the God of justice? God, it's been interesting watching Christians this week, especially. We had another kind of blow up in the media where it pitted Christians against non-Christians. And it gave Christians an, an incredible opportunity to talk about you. Um, but it was amazing to watch how many did a couple things. One, people who did what they were supposed to, who showcased your love, your grace, your mercy, and most of all, your truth, uh, and did so by backing it up with uh, powerful Bible verses, uh, obviously your word. Then I saw other people not say anything. Uh, they profess to be Christians, but when their non-Christian friends were posting about this, and some antagonistically, some just questioning, um, there was no response from them. I read a quote today from John Calvin, and he had said, a dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. And yet I saw so many people remaining silent when it was a great opportunity to defend your word, teach about your word and show the world love. And then I saw the opposite happen as well. Um, I saw people who went overboard, who showed not love, but anger and spite, uh, vindictiveness, which is just as bad. And then I also saw the kind of people that, that Malachi is referring to, specifically the priests. So the people in the story, they had been sent away to Babylon. Probably their parents, grandparents had been sent away to Babylon. And they had been punished that's where their exile came from and now they had been returned at this point by about a, a hundred years or so at this point they'd also rebuilt the temple and so they thought that everything was going to be good they would be obedient they would rebuild the temple and your glory would come and fill it yet they were still heavily under persecution religious political uh, financial persecution uh, there wasn't this easy sailing that they thought there was going to be. And in this particular couple verses, you don't go after the people, but you go after the people who are responsible for the sacrifices in the temple. You go after the priest saying, didn't you see this? Didn't you see this lame animal, this hurt animal, this blind animal? Uh, how dare you allow this to happen? You are responsible for telling these people you are responsible for their spiritual guidance. You are responsible for telling them that what they're doing is wrong. So in these couple chapters, I mean, sorry, a couple of verses, you go after the priests who are doing wrong. And then you go on to say, but you are profaning it by saying that the table of the Lord is common and its offerings despicable. You also say how tiresome it is. You turn up your nose at it. 
says the Lord, who rules over all, and instead bring me what is stolen, lame, or sick. I also sadly saw this response to what was happening in the media this week. I saw Christians who treated your word as something common, almost as something to turn their nose up at. I actually, and I, you know me, I'm not a big one of Christians going after Christians because how does that look to non-Christians? But I saw a person who said something and attributed it to you. And I knew it wasn't anywhere in the Bible. And so I just calmly, respectfully asked her, you know, where did you find that in the Bible? And she said, it's not in the Bible. That's my take on it. And, and I had to have a conversation about that, that this is the Lord's holy word for us. And we treat it so commonly and you don't get to do that. There's a lot of things that I let slide. There's a lot of things that you've taught me to have grace about. There's a lot of things that amazingly you've taught me how to have patience about. But the truth of what you say in your word to me is just so black and white that I truly had a harder time with these in-between people, these lukewarm Christians this week than I did with the people who said nothing or the people who, who did it with uh, inappropriate words. And you talk about that in Revelation. If you're going to be lukewarm, pff, I'm going to spit you out. Be cold, be hot, but don't be lukewarm. The straddling the fence, one foot here, one foot there, doesn't work. You go on to say there will be harsh condemnation for the hypocrite who has a valuable male animal in his flock, but vows and sacrifices something inferior to the Lord. For I am a great king and my name is awesome among the nations. God, if, if we fear man or fear our own ego more than you, we are that hypocrite. I just had a conversation with a non-believer today on Facebook. And he was comparing two Bible verses. A person speaks out against this, but they do this. That is a hypocrite. And I said, I totally agree with you. <laughs> if you say this and then you do this, that is the definition of hypocrisy. But the amazing thing is, is we all sin, but yet through God's grace and the redemptive nature of your son's sacrifice, we are forgiven for those sins. God, my heart breaks when I or anyone else doesn't fear you above everything else because it means that something else has become an idol in our life. Again, whether it's other people, our ego, our desire to be right, it's different for every, pe every person. And when that idol makes your word common and your son's sacrifice common, that even hurts my heart to say that. And when, and when it makes your grace and your mercy and your sovereignty common, I really struggle with that. And I've really struggled this week. I can speak to the people who say nothing. I can speak to the people who speak in hatred. I can speak to the non-Christians who have questions and you've taught me to do so over time with grace. But I really struggle with people who do not fear your word, who choose their own versions of it or pick pieces out of it that they want to find acceptable in their life. I will agree with 72% of the Bible, but the rest I'm not going to hold true in my life. I just had a guy write to me who was interested in the dating part and his letter was very much filled with Bible verses and what he believed and for the most part he was on track. Uh, anytime you quote Bible verses for the most part you're pretty much on track unless you're mushing them together for your own opinion or your own way. But then about three-fourths of the way through the message, he lost me when he said how he doesn't 
believe in churches. He thinks that all pastors are hypocrites. It's his life mission to go after pastors. And I thought, you can't, you can't do that. Now, granted, you can go after false prophets. I have no problem with that. But you can't pick and choose which part of the Bible you follow. You can't make certain parts common. You can't hold back certain things into your life. Just like you were referring to in Malachi, you can't hold back the good things in your life and turn over the lame animals. It is all or nothing. The Bible clearly states what church is to be and why we are to participate in it. It very clearly stipulates what a, a pastor type position looks like. Who is called to it and what does that person look like? You don't get to pick and choose what you like and don't like in the Bible. It is your word, God. God, I pray for people who don't understand how powerful your message is. Not just the non-Christians. Because I know that in your will and your timing... You'll allow their hearts, if that is your choice, to understand just how powerful your words are. But God, my heart breaks for those of us who should already know this. Who read your word and aren't swayed in passion over it. It, it should bring joy and peace and excitement and thought into our lives and into our hearts. Nothing, nothing should be common about it. And what we offer from reading it shouldn't be common. It should be the best of the best. We should be very intentional about the words and deeds that come out in our lives from what we read in the Bible. It shouldn't be second best. Not for you, God. God, I pray for us to get our priorities right. Not just in what we speak on social media, but in how we treat other people. How will we respond to the request, not just of the people we like, but the people we don't like? I know you said to love everyone, but that's kind of really hard for us. <laughs> and I know we work at it, but who we are in you speaks volumes with how we deal with those situations. Not the easy situations, but the hard situations. Does the world see our second best that is common? Or do they see this amazing God who is sovereign in our life, who protects us, rules over us, shows us unlimited grace and mercy and boundless love, forgiving our sins by crucifying his only son? God, show us what we're bringing to the world. Are we bringing what is common or are we bringing you, our mighty, faithful God, our healer, our everlasting God, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, our Alpha and our Omega, God, our provider, our almighty God, gracious Father, our rock, our redeemer, the God of the universe, the God of my heart, the great king who rules over all whose name is awesome among the nations i pray all this in your son's name amen